So the next thing to do is let's add our schema for the garage. So we'll have a model for our um, a car and it'll have a name and a year, a make, a model, which really actually make and model are probably going to be our manufacturer, manufacturer. Is that how you spell that? It's um, it's make better. It seems really bad. Manufacturer and actually maybe car make, and that has a name. And create car makes and null is false. And what we'll also do is say add index to our car makes for our name and it has to be unique. And we'll generate another for our, our car model. And this will have a car make belongs to, it also has a name. Uh, car, uh, create car models. Foreign key is good. Null is false. Null is false as well here. And we'll add another index for our car models. And this will be for our car make ID and our name. And it has to be unique as well. And so I, we know, like when we do this belongs to, and it's adding this reference, car make ID is going to receive a value. So we'll migrate this. And this should give us both our car makes and our car models. Perfect. And the only thing we need to do, I think, like we have our car make, we need to add our context validations. It validates attributes and uh, make equals car make dot new make dot valid expect make dot errors dot full messages to equal um, a name can't be blank and super slow but it's there so we can validate our name presence is true we have that perfect and now we go to our car model. And what I want to do is I don't want to call this car make. I want to call it make. Um, and the class here will be car make. And I'm kind of going ahead a little bit doing that, but I, I'm not too worried about it. All right, it's attributes. So we'll have our model is our car model dot new model. You see the pattern here, model.valid, expect messages. Ooh, a lot of line, no, a lot of S's there, to equal. And here we expect um, make can't be blank and name can't be blank. Class name, oh, that's correct, class name. So we are missing an L. L's are always important. Uh, so make must exist. Uh, so we need to do that. So make equals car make dot create with a name of uh, car make name. So actually we get Actually, we'll use that validation um, must exist. We'll use that validation. I actually like that better. So make must exist, must exist, name can't be like. Now here's where this is going to get interesting. I like my validations at the top. So we're going to say name presence is true. Okay, this is going to be fine. However, you'll notice that the array is backwards. So what we'll do is say match array. 
and now to pass. So match array is just saying, I expect all these elements, but they don't have to exist in this particular order. And what we'll also do is say it um, requires name to be unique per make. So make one equals car make dot create name make one make two equals car make dot create uh, name is make two and so we'll have uh, car one equals uh, or model yeah, I can't click there model or actually we're going to do this sorry I'm trying to think here car model dot create and we're going to have our make be our make one and our name will be uh, model like this and now what we want to expect to do is if I have a model and I say car model dot new with the make of make one and the name of and we'll do this one different caps or cases uh, expect model or model dot valid expect model dot errors dot full messages to equal um, uh, name is already taken I don't know uh, we'll find out so I initialize make ID foreign key car make ID. okay so we don't have that so what we're gonna say is uniqueness is true and uh, uniqueness it is uniqueness right yes so maybe I need to just go ahead and say uh, case and sensitive true is that right case uh, rails uh, validates uniqueness of case sensitive see this is I will say this that is the thing that like sometimes it tells you like this actually does not exist um, but like in that one like I always can't I can never remember is it case sensitive or case insensitive uh, but what we've done here is we've defined our model to say like if I use the same make as this one even though it's a different case it should be an error however if I come over here and I change this model dot make to make two model dot valid um, we expect this one to work and the interesting question here is so far I've never tested valid valid to be truthy I've only gone after the errors and so it makes me wonder to be kind of symmetrical with the rest of these tests to actually say I expect model dot errors dot full messages to be empty like that um, mm -hmm, line 28 so model dot Error stuff for messages. There we go. So yeah, I kind of like this. Every time before, we always say model valid, model full messages, model valid, and now we have it again here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a, um, a a scope to this to actually be for our car make ID, and it works. So now we can say that we have our basic um, add car makes and models cool and the next thing to do is we'll add the user's car so rails generate model and we're going to have a car and this belongs to a user and the question is, should we make it have the car make and the car model? And I think the answer to that is yes. 
only because of the fact that it'll make it real easy to search for a particular ma all the particular makes separate from models uh, so we don't have to join through um, and so I, I know we're kind of doing we're we're doubly linking this but I think it's okay um, it has a name it has a year year will be an integer and will that be all we do for right now probably so we'll have our car oh wait uh, create cars so no false no false no false no false and for this one I don't I don't think I'm going to add any validations for this um, all of this is required so we'll migrate our database And we're going to hop over to our car model and just change it to be the way I like it. Context validations. It validates attributes, car attributes. And car equals car.new, car.valid. Expect car.errors.full messages to equal. Uh, user can't uh, user must exist I remember that car uh, make must exist and model must exist and we're gonna get different errors but really close and that's because we need to change this class name to car make oh, we want to do this and we also want to set our foreign key to be uh, car make ID. We don't have unit tests for that, but I think that's okay. It would eventually come up, right? Uh, the app will just stop working completely. Um, so that does that. So we'll say add car. And what I'm going to do real quick is just hop over to our user and we're going to say user has many cars. Uh, make will has many cars. Um, for an oh yeah, that should work. And model is going to have many cars. So let's go into our seeds real quick. Oh wait, real quick, I'm going to just amend this okay and we'll go into our db seeds and we'll say car dot um, car make dot create and the name for this will be Volkswagen car make uh, model dot create uh, the user or uh, the name BBW and the model or the name will actually be Beetle. And user will be user.first and car.create for user make model name Spina 1967. Okay, so this is a little bit specific to me, but it is okay. Well, let's see what happens. Rails to be seed. And we should work. We do not work. Unify method beetle. Oh. Equals. Oh, uh, seed. So if this works, it does not duplicate. Key uh, makes on name. Oh, uh, this is bad. We'll see. Car make dot truncate. Can you do that? No. Delete all. Car model dot delete all. Dot delete all. That should work. Okay. 
there's a reseed method. I chose not to do that because I don't want to have to recreate my user account. Okay, so that gives us this. So what we should be able to do is say like car dot first. That gives us that uh, car equals this. So we have our model and our make. Okay, that works. So if we go and find our make, um, this is car make. I don't think I like that name car make. Uh, but it's okay. Make dot cars. That gives us back our car. Cool. Model car model dot first. Model dot cars. That gives back our car. User. And we have user dot cars. That works. Okay. So, you know, I kind of mentioned earlier on the video, like you shouldn't debug. You should write a unit test instead of using your REPL. And that's true. Except uh, I'm ready to close this video because I'm getting a little bit tired of talking right now. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just commit this last thing and say add seed data. Even though we don't create a user and we're kind of uh, requiring us to already have that, it's perfectly fine for this. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you have any ideas on things you'd like to see me add to it, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. But as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.